In this video, I will be recapping every Sony Pictures Universal Marvel character movie spinnock so far in under 10 minutes. Our journey starts off with 2018's Venom. The movie starts off with a crash of a space probe belonging to the Life Foundation, which just so happens to be carrying the symbiotic life forms. These life forms are recovered by the Life Foundation, who are bad by the way. Eddie Brock is an investigative journalist who investigates our bad guy, Carlton Drake, about the human trials using the symbiotes. This leads to Eddie and his girlfriend slash fiance Anne both losing their jobs and breaking up. Many months later, Eddie then meets up with Dora. No, not that one. She then tells Eddie that she wants to expose Drake over the unethical human trials and the two then break into the research facility and Eddie learns that one of his friends, a homeless woman named Maria, is being tested on. Eddie tries to free her but the symbiote latches onto him and he doesn't realise that Maria dies. Eddie then goes to visit Anne who is now dating Dr. Dan Lewis and the effects of this Venom symbiote starts to show. He starts looking for live meat to eat. Dora is then killed by another symbiote. Drake then sends men after Eddie in order to retrieve the symbiote and we get our first look at Venom. Venom then explains to Eddie about how Eddie is a host and that they need to find Drake's rocket. Eddie then sends the evidence to his old boss with the aid of Venom, leading to yet another chase. Anne then finds out about Venom. Riot, which is the symbiote that was used to kill Dora, then bonds to Drake. Dan then tells Eddie that Venom is killing him and Anne fires a really loud frequency causing Venom to be removed from Eddie's body. Drake then captures Eddie whilst Venom bonds to Anne to save Eddie. Eddie and Venom share a kiss, with Venom being the ultimate wingman. And Venom says that he has decided to stay because like Eddie, he too is a loser. Meanwhile, Drake, who's now bonded with Riot, launches a rocket to the symbiote's home planet to return with an invasion fleet, and our heroes try to stop this plan. Venom and Riot fight each other with the usual stakes at play. Venom blows up the ship containing Riot, and since fire is the symbiote's weakness, Riot dies and so does Drake. Eddie then makes a deal with Venom that he can only eat bad people. We then see Mrs. Chen's store get robbed, and we see them dropped the best line of the film. We are Venom. The post credit scene shows the scene from Into the Spider-Verse, but we don't care about that. Instead, we care about this one, which shows Cletus Cassidy, a serial killer, which leads us to our next film, Venom Let There Be Carnage. The film opens on a flashback of young Cletus as he watches his love, Francis, being taken away from the orphanage to the Ravenscroft Institute. On the way there, she uses her powers of sound manipulation and attacks a young Patrick Mulligan, who loses his hearing abilities too. In the present day, Mulligan calls up on Eddie to interview Cletus once again, since he's the only one that Cletus will talk to. Venom then uses his photographic memory to find find out where the body of Cassidy's victims are. This then makes Eddie super famous, thus prompting a ban on the death sentence to be lifted, and Cletus is given the death sentence, to which he is obviously not happy, and invites Eddie to meet, and Anne reveals to Eddie that she is engaged to Dr. Dan. Eddie then once again visits Cassidy, who then angers Eddie so much that Venom goes to attack Cassidy, who then bites him and gets a taste of his blood. Then come the day of the execution, but right as the drugs are being injected into Cassidy, Carnage rejects the drug. The two then break out and kill everyone at the viewing, and then they make a deal. Cassidy will help Carnage Carnage kill Venom and Eddie, whilst Carnage will help Cassidy break Francis out of the Ravenscroft Institute. It feels important to state now that Carnage is in fact Venom's biological son, since all the other symbiotes on Earth die in Venom 1. As Cassidy and Carnage are making the deal, the opposite is happening with Eddie and Venom. The two then get into an argument, causing Venom to split from Eddie and breaks the Ducati in the process. Then Venom latches onto various hosts and ends up in a nightclub where he's treated like a saviour. Eddie is then arrested by Mulligan, who interrogates Eddie about Cassidy and the interviews, and calls for a really good lawyer. Nope, not Matt Murdock's sad. But instead it's Anne. And Eddie tells her that Venom and him had a fight and Venom left him. Anne then heads to Mrs. Chen, who Venom is latched onto, and floods with Venom to help him free Eddie. The two then make up under the supervision of Anne and head to stop Carnage and Cassidy once and for all. Cassidy breaks Francis out of the institution and we find out that Carnage is vulnerable to the Shriek that Shriek makes causing Cassidy and Carnage to argue. Then Cassidy and Shriek decide to get married and kidnap Anne and Mulligan as gifts for each other. Then the heroes arrive and Venom hides away, but Eddie says that Venom can eat them, so he agrees. We then see an awesome fight between Carnage and Venom, Shriek then Shrieks, which Carnage does not like, which creates further conflict between Cassidy and Carnage. And then we find out the reason why Venom and Eddie work so well is that because their relationship is symbiotic, which is something Carnage and Cassidy lack. Venom then wins the fight and eats Carnage and the head of Cassidy. The two then go on the run due to breaking out of jail and it's revealed that Mulligan also perhaps has the symbiote. After a banging end credit song, we see that Venom and Eddie are chilling on a beach in Mexico and Venom talks about all the knowledge the symbiotes have collected over the billions of years that they've existed for. Then they teleport to the MCU where they see a news broadcast of J. Jonah Jameson talking about Peter Parker, which nicely leads us to Venom's final appearance so far and that is Spider-Man No Way Home. He's basically just in the post credit scene and talks to the bartender about the history of the MCU and is determined to meet Spider-Man at which point he gets teleported back, but leaves behind a bit of the symbiote for future use. Next up we have the cinematic masterpiece that is Morbius. 
The film opens on a 10 year old Michael Morbius who has a blood illness that means he can't walk without crutches. He meets his new friend Milo who also suffers the same illness and they are cared for by their adoptive father Emil Nicholas. He then takes Michael to New York to pursue a career in medicine whilst T takes care of Milo back in Greece. Cut to 2019 and we see the greatest superhero of all time win a Nobel Prize for his work on artificial blood. Michael then asks for the assistance of Dr. Hoops, sorry, Milo, to fund an illegal expedition to Costa Rica. At the destination, Michael slices his hand, trying to get the attention of vampire bats and tries to become Batman. Sorry, wrong universe. Michael and Martina are on a ship full of mercenaries trying to conduct further trials of the serum that is supposed to cure his blood disease. He tries the experiment on himself and it works. Meanwhile, one of the mercenaries goes to check up on them, but Michael has disappeared. We see Michael on the roof and the mercenaries start shooting, prompting Michael to attack him. This leads to a gruesome fight where we see Michael killed the entire crew besides Martin and drains them of their blood. Michael then undergoes a training montage where we see him learn his abilities and the time limits of the human form before he has to consume blood. Luckily for Michael, remember that fake blood? He can use that. Michael then tries to see the full extent of the limitations of his power so he locks himself in a glass cage and slowly starts transforming. Milo who visits rushes and gives him the fake blood. Milo then finds out that Michael has cured himself and asks for the cure. However, Michael refuses because he can turn Milo into a vampire. Meanwhile, detectives investigate Investigating the ship incident, interrogate Martine, who is now in hospital, and she calls her a really good lawyer. No, still no. Okay, fine. And after this, one of the nurses at Michael's research lab gets her blood sucked out of her, prompting a further investigation from the detectives. As per every Sony superhero movie so far, Michael gets arrested and interrogated, to which he says, You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Or something along those lines. He gets thrown into jail and calls for his really good lawyer. Stop doing this. It's Milo, who hands Michael a pack of fresh blood and walks away. This makes Michael realize that Milo was the one who took the serum and was the one that killed the nurse lady from before. Michael then breaks out of prison and tracks Milo down, leading to them to fight in the subway and Michael flies away as the cops arrive in the scene. Michael then meets up with Martin and they acquire a new lab, but Morbius makes a funny stroke in the history of cinema. I they then use his lab to create a cure for the vampireness of the serum. Milo then goes to meet Nicholas, you know, the adoptive father, and then kills him. Michael arrives too late, however, and then Milo also kidnaps Martine and stabs her, causing her to also die. Michael then sucks her blood and starts to fight Milo. Michael then manages to summon an army of bats at Milo. Bro's literally Batman. Then Michael stabs Milo with the antibody and kills Milo. It is then suggested that Martine is also a vampire, having ingested some of Michael's blood. Then we arrive at the best post credit scene ever. The first one shows Vol arriving into Morbius's universe after the events of No Way Home, which doesn't make sense. Then the second one shows Morbius and Vulture team up to fight Spider-Man or something. I don't really know. And finally we have a movie that is greater than Morbius itself, Madam Web. The film opens in Peru where we see a pregnant Constance Webb and her Zico Sims leading a research group gathering information about a rare species of spiders with healing properties. Sims betrays the research group and attempts to kill the entire group leaving Constance for dead. She's then helped by a group of spider people who tried who then help her give birth to Cassandra Webb and she dies soon after. Cut to 30 years later and we see Cassandra working in the New York Fire Department alongside a certain Ben Parker. She also then mentions to Ben during one of the missions whether or not he has been shot in Queens before. The the two then rescue a man stuck in a car on the side of a bridge only for Cassandra to get trapped inside the car and fall to her death. She then experiences a weird vision and gets revived by Ben and she gains the ability to look into the future. She then attends Ben's sister-in-law's baby shower and they try to figure out the name of the baby. Let's pause right here. What do you think the name of the baby is? Could it be Ben? Could it be Richard Jr? They leave the baby unnamed but I think we all know the name of the baby. Sims meanwhile is trying to hunt down the three girls Julia Cornwall, Anya Corazon and Matty Franklin. These three are supposedly going to kill him in the future so he decides to kill them in the present. The three girls then coincidentally meet at Grand Central Station where Cassandra sees a vision of our beloved bad guy attacking them. She then attempts to save the girls and flees, stealing a taxi in the process and also being labelled kidnapper. The group then head to a forest where Cassandra leaves the girls for safekeeping while she goes looking for answers. The girls then decide that they don't want to be safe and head out to a diner where Sims tracks them down and goes to attack them. Cassandra learns that Sims had worked with her mother and decides to stop them at the diner, saving the girls. She then hands the girls over to Ben and she heads off to Peru to look for more answers about Sims. At Peru, Cassandra meets one of the people who help her mom give birth to her and explains the truth behind why her mom was at the Amazon. It turns out that Cassandra had a neurological disease but she was healed by the healing spider that helped with her birth at the start of the movie. He then tells her that when taking the responsibility, great power will come. At the exact same point in time, Mary Parker goes into labour, causing the girls to come 
come out of hiding and head to a hospital. Cassandra, through the magic of plot, somehow ends up back in America, right in time to stop Sims from attacking Mary and Ben and the three girls. Cassandra and the girls then fight Sim, except no punches are actually thrown, and he is defeated by falling to his death. But the explosion results in Cassandra also being blind, but hey, she can see the future now, and she hints at the fact that Ben is going to be much more than an uncle. And the film ends with Cassandra monologuing about how the girls will be really powerful and she will help them, whilst getting a new glimpse at their super suits. Comment below what other movies you want me to recap and subscribe whilst you're there.